Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss synaptic tagmin in a bit more detail than we've ever discussed it before. So, uh, the uh, uh, the um, order for this video then, the um, schedule, what we're going to do is we're firstly going to revise um, what is happening in an axon terminal of a neuron, i.e. Uh, we're going to revise the formation of the docking complexes, the formation of the core snare complexes, and then we're going to talk about uh, the fact that the actual fusion of these core snare complexes is mediated by calcium entry, which uh, occurs when an action potential arrives at the axon terminal. Okay, so we're just going to review the basic neurophysiology uh, of synapses. Then what we'll talk about is synaptotagmin. We'll talk about its structure, we'll talk about C2 domains and what those are, uh, and then we'll talk about the different types of it, and then a bit of experimental evidence for how important it is. Okay, and we'll look at its function in later videos. Right, so how it, well, how it actually achieves the coupling of... Um, the few of the fusion of action potentials to the arrival of well the few sorry the fusion of the neurotransmit synaptic vesicles with the uh, presynaptic membrane uh, to the arrival of an action potential. So here is our axon terminal here. So this is an axon terminal. Right. So in the axon terminal, what happens is we fill vesicles with neurotransmitter. Okay, so let me draw this here. So this is a vesicle full up with neurotransmitter in pink here. Okay, now when you have a vesicle that's full up with neurotransmitter like that, that's known as a synaptic vesicle. So this is a synaptic vesicle. Now, basically, uh, we in the axon terminals of neurons, what happens to the synaptic vesicles is they dock at what's known as the active zone. So this, uh, let me highlight it in a different color, this portion of the membrane of the axon terminal which actually faces the postsynaptic cell. So it actually is the portion uh, that, um, that uh, well, faces onto the postsynaptic cell here. So here's the postsynaptic cell uh, drawn with a hole in it. Okay, so here's the postsynaptic cell. Maybe it's a dendritic spine of the postsynaptic cell. So this is an axon terminal here. This is a potentially a dendritic spine. So the portion of uh, the axon terminal membrane which actually faces onto the postsynaptic cell, uh, that portion is known as the active zone. So this is the active zone of the presynaptic membrane. Okay, and what happens is that we dock synaptic vesicles at this active zone. So we attach these synaptic vesicles to the membrane of the active zone so that they are ready uh, to be released straight away when the action potential actually arrives at the axon terminal. Okay, so we're all ready basically. So these docked vesicles um, are the ones that are going to be released first when an action potential arises. So these are docked vesicles. And this um, this store of vesicles, of synaptic vesicles, which are docked onto the active zone, those are what are known as the readily releasable vesicle pool. So this whole store of vesicles here, this is then called the readily releasable vesicle pool. Okay, so what we want to look at is firstly we want to remind ourselves of how uh, we dock these vesicles to the active zone, uh, so well to the presynaptic membrane here, and then what we want to look at is when an action potential comes, what is going to happen that causes these vesicles to actually fuse with the um, presynaptic membrane and be release their vesicle, well release their neurotransmitter contents into the synaptic cleft. Okay. So, we'll start off by looking at what actually uh, allows synaptic vesicles to dock with the membrane of the, well, with the presynaptic membrane at the active zone. Okay, right. So, in order for this to happen, basically, you're going to have to have proteins in the synaptic vesicle binding to proteins that are on the plasma membrane. So, let's say this is the plasma membrane over here. 
So this is meant to represent the plasma membrane, okay? And this represents our synaptic vesicle over here. Right, so we need proteins in the synaptic vesicle to bind with proteins on the plasma membrane. And the proteins that are going to interact and dock the vesicle to the plasma membrane are what are known as snare proteins. I'll write this over here. So they're called snare proteins. Okay, and snare stands for snap receptor. So snare here stands for snap receptor, okay, because they bind to, a, to proteins known as SNAPs, okay, for soluble NSF attachment protein, uh, but we won't talk about those now because they're not directly relevant to um, how, well, they're not thought to be directly relevant to how uh, these synaptic vesicles dock at the plasma membrane. Okay, so the snare proteins can be roughly divided into two major types. Uh, the V-snares, which are those snares associated with the vesicle. So the V-snares over here, or the vesicular snares in um, four. So this is the vesicular, vesicular snares, okay? And then also the snares which are attached to the plasma membrane, which are called T-snares for target snares, because in this case, the plasma membrane is viewed as being the target membrane. It's the membrane which the uh, vesicle is going to fuse with. So these are the target snare proteins because they are in the target membrane, which in this case is the plasma membrane. Right, so what are these V-snares and T-snares? Well, in the uh, vesicle, the, you have one V-snare, which is known as Synapto brevin. Okay, so I've drawn two of them here. Um, so this is a synapto brevin protein, and specifically it's synapto brevin 2. So this in orange represents synapto brevin 2. Synapto brevin 2. Okay, now the structure of synaptobrevin 2 is that you have a portion which anchors it in the membrane of the vesicle and then this alpha helix which stretches into the cytoplasm. So that's the only V-snare that you have. Now, in the plasma membrane, you have two T-snares. So let me draw one first. So here, this one that I've drawn so far has a very similar structure to synaptobrevin 2. It has a membrane anchoring portion and then an alpha helix which extends into the cytoplasm here. And this is known as syntaxin and it's specifically syntaxin 1. So there are a lot of different syntaxin and synaptobrevin proteins. The ones involved in docking synaptic vesicles at the plasma membrane are synaptobrevin 2 and syntaxin 1. Okay, so now let's talk about the next uh, T-snare. So the next T-snare is a T-snare known as SNAP25, and it contributes to alpha helices, okay? So in turquoise here, this is SNAP25. So it has a membrane attachment portion, and then these two alpha helices which spread into the cytoplasm. Okay, so this is SNAP25. Now, what is believed to happen is that these alpha helices here, these four alpha helices, what they're going to do effectively is they're going to wind up with each other, and this winding up will begin at their tips here. So the tips will associate, and they'll start winding up, and then as they wind up more and more and more, it will spread downwards, basically, and you will effectively zipper up these, and as you do so, that will pull these two membranes together, okay? So this is what's known as the zipper, or the leucine zipper mechanism of uh, the formation of the snare core complexes, so leucine zipper formation, okay? Right? And uh, this complex that they're going to form here, this is what is known as a core snare complex. I'll try and write this up here. So it's a core snare complex. Okay, specifically at the moment, it's what's known as a trans core snare complex. So that's an expression that you may well hear um, and the reason it's called a trans-core snare complex, trans means across or on the other side.
Uh, so when you've got a transcore snare complex, it means that the snare proteins involved in the transcore snare complex are in two different membranes. And as you can see, we've got synaptobrevin 2 here in the vesicular membrane, and then the other two, uh, syntaxin 1 and SNAP25, they are both in the, uh, the plasma membrane over here. So that's why this is called the transcore snare complex. Right, uh, so uh, the other thing to discuss is that initially what happens is this syntaxin 1 protein here associates with SNAP25 first. So syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 will associate first. They all form a little complex with one another. And then when the vesicle, the synaptic vesicle over here, and I'll fill it with neurotransmitter to make it more obvious that this is a synaptic vesicle, okay? When the synaptic vesicle comes along, synaptobrevin 2 will join the fun effectively. It will uh, also entwine in and uh, form this coarse snare complex, which is a trans coarse snare complex. Okay, right, so you won't just form one of these uh, trans coarse snare complexes. Instead, what you will form is multiple of them. And usually, to make the picture nicely symmetric, we draw another trans coarse snare complex here. Okay, right, so let me colour all of these in. So, in orange here, we have synaptobrevin 2, and I'll extend it a little bit, um, down to the level with all the others. And in turquoise, we have SNAP25 here, providing two alpha helices into the trans snare complex. And in blue here, we have syntaxin 1. Okay, right, so what's going to happen is, as I say, as these sort of entwine up, it will bring these two membranes very close together. Now, what does not happen is, for some reason, these two membranes do not fuse, okay? Um, these snare proteins, by the way, snare proteins are used in a lot of other scenarios in cell um, in, in cells. Uh, so, for instance, in vesicle trafficking that occurs all over the cell, where, you, for instance, you have vesicles moving from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cis-golgi COP2-coated vesicles, and also vesicles moving from the cis-golgi back to the endoplasmic reticulum, those use snare proteins as well. And, in fact, uh, these snare proteins um, in those situations are thought to be uh, capable of causing fusion on their own. So they don't just dock the vesicle, they actually bring them so close together that they then fuse. Something uh, prevents that from happening in the, uh, in the axon terminal of neurons. Okay, we don't just want synaptic vesicles being released into um, the synaptic cleft when, as soon as they get to this membrane. We want them to be released upon an action potential arriving. So these core snare complexes in the axon terminals of neurons uh, only, um, only basically um, form the um, docking complex. They dock the vesicles. They don't fuse yet. Okay, right. So uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.